Hi, my name is Horst. I'm an engineer. And in Stuttgart, I work for Daimler Benz. And I can proudly announce this punk talk for bad mongos. Rock on! Everybody. This is Chebesta from Trube Jugend Sänger Knaben Wien, bringing you the second episode of Trube Jugend Radio, live from the city of Cologne in Germany, the gay capital of Germany. Um, a little bit tired today, but I've got a good reason for that. Just came back from the Welt Trube Jugend Tag yesterday, and uh, I really have to say, after I've been to actually eight. This was my ninth Welt to be Jugendtage. Stupid enough that I missed the first one, but I have to say, after having had time to contemplate and think about it, I really have to say the Trubi Jugend Treffen, as it's now called, were by far the best that ever took place in the beautiful city of Hamburg. So why is that? Let me give you some facts. We have 800 Jugendliche from all over the planet from, well, Australia, the USA, from Mexico. We had them from all over, all over Europe, actually. We had them from Finland. We had them from Switzerland. We had them from France. We had them from Austria. We had them from Germany. We had them from Norway. We had them from Sweden. We had them from Poland. We saw Jugendliche from, and now switching over the um, Atlantic. We had them from San Francisco. We saw people from um, Mexico. We saw people from well, any, all over the planet. And uh, that this made uh, the Welt to be you can take a number nine so special for me. I mean, it's the intensity of the crowd and the camaraderie, of course. And I also have to say that it was a pleasure to uh, see all the new Jugends really fitting well in, into the whole picture. We've got the uh, Moonshiner discussion and the Moonshiner topic um, over. So that was no issue, issue um, at all. We saw our Turb Negro play on the Saturday at the Grunschbahn and guys and, and the ladies who are listening. If you if you haven't been there, uh, just log on the internet and read it. Uh, see the pictures and check out all the sweaty the sweaty naked bodies. And the reason for that was not your typical gay behavior and wanting to get nude by for 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 no reason. But it was the fucking heat. The fucking heat of the concert. Not only the music was hot, but there was clearly the hottest concert of Turbo Negro, at least what I have ever experienced. Uh, we had 56 degrees. This is in Celsius. 50 freaking 6 degrees at the concert. What that meant is that you would be like trying to dance through a whole concert. I'm one of those guys who hits the pit. But after three or four songs, you were just not able to continue because your heart, you really had to fear that your heart will stop beating. So the nice thing was that if you walked out of, out of the concert, like not out, out of the building, but you, as soon as you left the pit, uh, you had like strangers, you can leave here, um, so strange, you, uh, yeah, strange you can leave here and you can leave here, you wouldn't know. They would just pick up ice and rub it on your naked body. That was actually beautiful. So you didn't have even have to ask. You got free drinks. Everybody was sharing drinks, and you got the ice. They, they would rub ice all over your body. And uh, if you were like really lucky, and I would have to say I was uh, getting lucky a lot on that weekend. I had beautiful males, not so many females, but I think that's okay. I had so many males, males licking the sweat of my uh, naked upper body, and I really have to say this was a real pleasure. We get all the naked body, but uh, belly rubbing in, which is also a secret hobby of uh, um, of, uh, for me. So um, whoever has who whoever was not there, really honestly, and I feel sorry for them, but I have to say, you missed the greatest. I I got the chance to talk to um, 
Tony after the show and I talked to Euroboy after the show and to Tommy and they were all mentioning that the heat was insane they were really in the heat was really insane at the concert but they have had uh, at least Euroboy told me because he's been around with the band longer back in the days in the in the US they had the uh, quite intense uh, um, and hot concerts in smaller clubs but honestly for me as a person I have never ever uh, experienced anything comparable to this concert not only the heat but also the selection like the atmosphere it was bigger than Knus last year but the atmosphere was awesome it was very intense it was very well humid and um, they played an actual really decent set they played um, they as far as I if you, I judge it they had a really perfect combination of uh, um, combination of old and uh, new songs, especially the second song they played. They played just um, just Flash uh, from an old album, and I have to say I've not heard that in ages. And I was really bringing the, almost the tears of joy, but it was so so sweaty, so it was probably the tears of pain in my eyes. But we had a blast. Um, this episode of the um, To Be Again Radio Show we will focus on mainly Hamburg. On the Belt To Be Again Tage, we. Uh, uh, we'll be having a Trubi Jugend discussion on what is the best beer in Hamburg. We got some nice lads from the UK over to um, actually judge and uh, find out wh which is the best beer of Hamburg. And um, the, the producer of the podcast, uh, Benge from Trubi Jugend Sänger Knappen Wien, he got the chance to talk to Tommy Manboy about um, his role with Trubi Negro and uh, we'll... Um, Finish the podcast with uh, some information of Turbo Jugend in Mexico. We will be talking to Juan, or, or uh, in his regular name, but he's called Pandemon666 uh, from Turbo Jugend Satanic in Mexico. So, uh, again, sit down, grab a beer, close your eyes, and listen to the second episode of Turbo Jugend Radio. Turbo Jugend discussion four in the second episode. Uh, last time we talked about Trubel Jugend and Nazis and we're going to change the topic up uh, because we were t uh, told that uh, we should not stick to two serious topics. So what we will be doing today is we will be judging and asking for which beer which beer from Hamburg is actually the best one. And uh, I see everybody's drinking Astra all the time and I sort of wonder if this is really the case. So what we did, we invited uh, three Trubel Jugend members um, from... Uh, uh, three Jugends, I will introduce them later and ask them uh, which beer they would actually prefer. We have five beers. We have uh, obviously Astra, we have Bex, we have Holsten, we have Flensburger and we have the northern German beer of Je Jever. And what we ask those guys is uh, to drink. This is a blindfold test so they don't know actually what they're drinking. They will be starting to drink the beers and they will rank the beers out of taste in the, in the, in the sequence of one to five and we'll find out which is the best beer of Hamburg, the best beer of northern Germany. So let's get it on. So here we sit in the park of Blunten and Blomen in front of the Trooper Jugend mini golf tournament. After uh, three uh, uh, Trooper Jugend who, who will be do the, doing the tasting in front of me, I'm now asking them to introduce themselves and then we can start with the beer tasting. Okay, hi, uh, Duncan from uh, TJ Aberdeen or Sway Hawks or Two Hawks, uh, everybody knows if you don't know me, tough shit. Uh, Aiden from TJ Aotearoa, U666 and TJ Olomots from uh, New Zealand and Czech Republic. Hawk from TJ Stoke Content, known as Professor Yaffle. <laughs> All right. So there are profound uh, uh, persons who know really their shit and they know beer. And we'll start with the beer number one, which is going to be handed out uh, to the contestants. And what, we'll, what they'll do, they just uh, will take a sip now drink the beer and maybe describe what they feel. Mr. Oh, Hans? I feel, I feel it, uh, it tastes a lot like beer. It's kind of, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's That's kind a of a bit watery and, but it's, it's okay. It goes down easier this time of the day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very bland. There's not much taste to it. Okay. It just tastes like beer, but not very good beer. So it's boring. So it must be Astra. Astra. <laughs> Okay. It's a lager, and I quite like it because it, <laughs> because it's boring. <laughs> okay. So what they'll do, they'll just uh, put the glass down, down. and and get the uh, oh, the no. next. <laughs> it's yeah. finished. It's finished. So no. <laughs> so they get the second glass now, 
And you what they are asked now, they... Glass. It is a glass. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, glass number two? That tastes better, actually. Better? <laughs> yeah. It does taste better. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. It has, it has some more flavor. It's still... Uh, it's hard coming from Czech Republic, but it's still it's still it's still pretty watery, but it does have a bit more flavor It's certainly better than the last. I think it's Augustina. To be honest, it tastes pretty much the same as the last one. Okay <laughs> All right, doesn't make it easier. We'll go with the beer number three We just hand it out to the uh, contestants now If I drink all five of them, you know I can be sick Oh, you've been would, not, would not have been the first well, time, what a, so... What a question to ask. <laughs> All right. Duncan, have you tried it? No, I think it, it's got a better smell. It's got a bad smell. It's no, it's number got three. A, be a better smell. A better smell. A better smell. Better okay, that's good. <laughs> that's nice, actually. That's nice? <laughs> yeah. Can I have a point of that? <laughs> yeah, we'll have more of that, so <laughs> we can hook nice. you up with it. No, like that. Better. It yeah. is certainly the best beer so far. But it's the one I feel like throwing up more on. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I, I'm gonna say there's been a lot of beers already today. That's fucking hot as fuck. So we're gonna say it's a good thing. It's certainly my favorite out of the three, but I suspect that it's gonna taste horrible in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. So it looks like number beer number three would be the uh, favorite, but we'll talk about this in the on the in the end. Because the, the, the challenge is to rank the beers actually afterwards. Oh, right. okay. I'm in there. You have been at a brewery this morning? Yeah. Oh, it's the highs, yeah? Oh. No. That tastes like shit. <laughs> can, can you repeat that? I, the, I think the macro didn't get that. Tastes like shit. <laughs> Beer number four tastes like shit. It's like dirty water. Like the, drinking the fucking Danube. All right, so you probably have experienced that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't even want to ask. Hawk? I think it tastes like the Trent, and obviously the Trent's a much cleaner river than the Danube. Okay. Well, it's got a fucking nasty aftertaste. Like you taste it, and it tastes like nothing, and then just afterwards, it tastes fucking horrible. Fucking horrible. All right. So beer number four is regarded as uh, river water. We'll send a letter to the brewery because I know what beer number four is. It does. Yeah, All right. Different, different rivers. The last okay. one. It's the last beer. It's beer number five. Never too late. Ooh, Duncan is uh, contemplating and really, really soaking it in. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one. Is that a good sign? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like that at all, actually. I don't know okay. what. No. Uh, it's a just a no. A little bit more fresh than yeah. than that before, but also I'll go with that. Also awful. Yeah, I don't like that. Could be Astra. Yeah. Okay, so the no, could I be Astra. I don't. I, I I fucking disagree with the Scottish cunt. I think it's uh it's nice. It's it's subtle. It has some nice afternotes. Subtle. It's Fuck subtle. But I don't yeah, even know the word. Work work on your fucking palate, mate. If you think if you don't think it's subtle, then you're probably drinking like too many Fosters or some shit like that. <laughs> Hawk. As a fellow Scottish cunt, I disagree with the other Scottish cunt too. I think it's it's the smoothest one of the five and my favourite. Really? So number five is your favourite? Yeah. Well, you can have. All right. So the contestants are now uh, going back uh, and are contemplating about their judges. What they're doing now? They're discussing uh, the beer tastes and doing their. Uh, each of the three contest contestants are doing their private sequence of uh, preferred beers and uh, I'll just walk over them to them and ask them to actually uh, rank uh, the beers for me. So right, Aiden, you're the first we, we one. About this before, and which, uh, uh, which is your favorite beer? So I'm gonna go with five as the top. Five, it was, I thought it was, I thought it was subtle. It was nice. And yeah, it had some. Yeah, I'm, I'm a wanker now. I live in Czech Republic. I have good beer all the time. So, if you had a good start of Pramen or maybe a Sviani or something, it would have been better. But for Hamburg, it was okay. Then three, three, two, one. From the most flavorsome to the least flavorsome, 
One tasted like water, but it was okay as well. And four was fucking disgusting. Yeah. Four can oh, fuck right off. One. I don't I don't even care what four is. I never want we to drink to this beer ever again. We have, we have to write it down to count. Here. Okay, um, so you 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 picked beer number five as your favorite. Five, five. And I can uh all right. five, three, two, one, four. So Hawk, what is your uh, sequence of the beers? I must confess that I'm not a big drinker of lago, but personally I prefer number five, then number four, despite what other people have said. Then number one, two, and three. Three was quite flavoursome, but I just like I say, it, it, it's going to taste nasty afterwards. I can tell. Okay, so so you're writing this one down. Fuck off. So five, four, five, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So okay, and uh, that can do the last one. I need your order okay. now. To be honest, I can drink any of them, but not number four. Number four tastes like fucking shit. Okay. I would do it from the from the uh, from the bottom. So four is your last last choice. Uh, then uh, three, two, one. I don't even know about number five. Four. Yeah, then yeah, the number. But number five is your favorite. I think number one is the easiest one to go down. Easiest oh. one to drink. Okay. So go Five, to a, uh, go to a better or something and then go to like... Chuck it in the middle or I mean, somewhere. Are, there are some sides. So so number one is the best. It, yeah. It's the easiest... In my uh, yeah, state just now, it's the yeah. easiest one to drink. So I'm doing okay, one, two, five, one. three, four. And three yeah. beer. Okay. Four, I do not want fucking four again. <laughs> no, it's okay, so four is by far the worst beer. Okay. So now tell us like... What are the what are the beers? Okay, what are the beers? Is this awful? Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna say Astra was three. Yeah, this is this is no. no, no. Was that four? One. No. One. It was yeah! one. Yay! So Astra, the beer Astra was actually number one, and only Duncan likes Astra the most. You picked one. Uh, but Astra is fucking horrible. Astra is fucking horrible. As uh, you judged it uh, actually on on, on, on uh, position four. Yes. So you don't like it. You like Yever actually. It tastes like fucking water. Yes. And uh, it it turns out that Hawk because Hawk uh, also took number five. It uh, becomes clear that beer number five is actually the winner, which is Yever, which is kind of interesting because it's a kind of herb beer. But it turns out that Astra is by no means, or by only by Duncan means, uh, his favorite beer. So back in the city of Cologne, I can uh, sum up the somehow chaotic uh, blindfold beer testing that took place in uh, Planten und Blumen in the city of Hamburg. So as you heard, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Yever. Jever is a small town in northern Germany uh, that has a locally quite famous beer. Um, pretty bitter, I think, but obviously um, quite tasty to the taste of the contestants. Number two is Astra. Um, comes up a little bit surprising to me since I keep hearing uh, complaints about uh, the taste of Astra after the third bottle. Usually people switch away um, from the uh, from Astra after uh, after I had a few sips. Um, number three is um, Bex. Bex international beer. Everybody should know that, so no explanation necessary uh, there. Number four is Flensburger or Flens, as they call it. It's a um, it's quite small, but in Germany kind of uh, uh, recognized beer. Uh, from Flensburg, which is a um, small town at the border of Denmark, which uh, it also has a kind of unique taste to it, I think. And uh, number five is Holsten. Holsten is a uh, local beer from Hamburg, and it's uh, brewed in the city of Hamburg. And I, as, I far, as far as I'm um, informed, Holsten, the Holsten brewery bought Astra, but um, obviously the beer tastes like crap, as the contestants. Uh, came to the conclusion they all hated it so uh, thanks again for the um, to the contestants for the beer tasting um, one thing uh, that I have to say is that Astra is obviously in everybody's uh, mouths as they um, are visiting Hamburg for the Welt to Bügenzeige but honestly it's it's not the the best beer of the city but anyway the brand of obviously uh, tells a different story so everybody at least when they start drinking beers they take to Astra. Turbo Jugend update. So 
So let's move over to the next segment of Tube Jugend Radio. Bengel from Tube Jugend Sängerknaben Wien was hanging out in front of Fred Schlemmerek and uh, was talking to people as he discovered a quite familiar face just across the street leaning on a car. He looked closely and yes, it was Tommy Manboy who was just hanging out with the crowd and talking to people. Thank God Bengel had his microphone with him and got the chance to talk to him. Hallo und Servus to all of you. This is Bengel from Tube Jugend Sänger Knabenwien. As Chipester already said, we were lucky enough to get the chance to talk to Tommy Manboy, who was a little bit aside the crowd at Fred Schlemreck talking to a guy from Guatemala, who you will s sometimes hear during the interview. We were sitting on a couch on the street uh, in front of a bar named Barbara Bar. Um, as some of you uh, probably know, Tommy isn't a new face within Tuba Negro. He toured with them long before as a guitar tech for Euroboy and also as the drum tech of Chris Summers. So uh, Tommy uh, starts to talk about Chris Summers. He's well. a really good friend of mine from all days, all of them since I was 15. Yeah. So and then uh, so I played in many punk bands and then then uh, so they always helped us a lot and we really loved Turbo Negro since we were kids. So yeah, so then so then I started working with them as well. It was really like it's always been like in their group of friends and even me and Thomas celebrated Christmas together in the bar and we did a lot of stupid shit early on. So so yeah, so actually the thing that I joined was actually I played with Knut and Thomas with different stuff before when I was younger and then and then uh, we tried when, when Turbo quit when Hank stopped doing it then um, me, Knut and Thomas uh, started a new band with Nick Oliveri called the Germans mm -hmm. and then but that that didn't uh, <laughs> end up well because uh, yeah whatever but and then so then we were all like fuck what should we do now and then and then Tom and Knut were like fuck this let's just do Turbo again so then it was just it felt just like natural it's like yeah because we already started playing some of the songs that is on the new album we already made for the other band so it's actually just like a thing we did since that that didn't work out and then let's now let's do, do Turbo so then we started making songs and then we were actually supposed to try different singers but then Tom was like what about Tony he's like a good old friend yeah. from London cool. and we were like yeah pfft. Why not? Let's bring him in. So we flew him over, and then uh, yeah, we were like, yeah, why not? Let's do the punk way with the. Blah. It's like fuck that. Let's do it. So that's that's actually how I joined it, and then yeah. So you traveled, uh, you traveled all before with them, just as as a uh, like a like a tech or like yeah. a friend or yeah, like a tech. Since uh, I all, I used to play with punk bands still, but then uh, I didn't I didn't earn money on that. It was just like for fun. As I like it, and then, and then, uh, and then, like I needed a job when I didn't tour. So I was just like, hey, can I just do guitar tech or drum tech? They were like, yeah, sure. So then I did that when I was home. I was like, yeah, I'm going tour with them and do that, and they pay me, and then I can tour with my bands, and yeah, so it was really nice, cool. I saw them when they were good and bad, and good and bad, you know, all that. So I learned how the how it works. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So actually, what is your favorite song? Hard. It's the same like say the best ACDC song. It's right. impossible for me. It's just like ACDC is a good band. There's many cool. You know what I mean. So I don't have I don't have a favorite song. So let's put it maybe let's let's put it this way. What is your favorite song to play? <laughs> yeah yeah cool cool cool. Imuraska uh, Dawa. All right. <laughs> no, we never play that. <laughs> so that's why it's the favorite because you never play it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's cool. It's up. It's like. It's like all, all the like the, the normal songs that it's supposed to be. like get it on is like an easy song to play like it's because the crowd is really into that and then I don't know it's a, it's different it, it's actually depends each show. Mm -hmm. 
We haven't been the only ones uh, who spotted Tommy Manboy, so, so we got interrupted several times uh, by Jugend's greeting and uh, talking uh, to the man behind the drums. In 2012, um, at Nova Rock Festival in Austria, I met Tommy Manboy by uh, coincidence uh, while watching uh, Metallica. Uh, back then he told me that uh, he is looking forward uh, to the Welt Tube Tage where they will play two full concerts in one night. Uh, I was uh, one of the uh, lucky ones uh, who sh uh, saw both shows, uh, <laughs> which was awesome and intense uh, as you can easily imagine. Uh, so I asked him again uh, how he felt after the two shows in 2012. The thing is uh, that I, guess I used to play drums since I was a kid all my life, but then I started playing guitar with punk bands. So I hadn't played drums in a rock band for like five or six years. So I was really out of shape. So that, that's what so when we, were like to, we had to play two shows, like one and a half hour, two times. I was just like... Because normally I played in punk bands, we only play 30 minutes. Yeah. Because that was like, pff, we're done. So it's just really hard, but now I've done it a lot, and so now it's okay again. But that was just, I was dead. I couldn't, I couldn't move, I was just like... <gasps> what what, uh, what uh, did you do afterwards, after, after the two gigs? Uh, Going to bed, yeah. sleeping? No, <laughs> I got shit-faced. <laughs> shit-faced. <laughs> All right, so that lead, leads me to the last question, um, and the last question is uh, why, what means uh, your, your like, uh, stage makeup? It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just like, uh, it's actually just like, uh, it's actually a little bit from Chris, because I really loved Chris, and he's a really good friend of mine, and I always really like Chris Summers, and he also used that scarf thing a lot of times, yeah. so I just... So like, dude, it's like I really liked his things. I just, just a little bit to fit in from his old stuff. Actually, where is Chris right now? He's uh, he's in Oslo. He got a kid and he works in a bar with his brother. Okay. He's he's doing really good. He's uh, he's just uh, yeah. He was just tired and he's doing good. Okay. As you could hear, Tommy Manboy revealed a lot of interesting facts about him and Turbo Negro. So I'd like to thank him for being so natural and uh, easy to talk to. Although Chris Summers, uh, at least in my eyes, uh, was a kind of a role model, uh, Tommy uh, didn't just follow his footsteps. He deserves absolutely the same spotlight. Thanks, Tommy Manboy. Well, thank you, Bengal, for picking up the one and only Tommy Manboy in the filthy streets of Hamburg. We're now shifting over to the next segment, Turbo Jugend Worldwide, where we'll try to get a hold of uh, various activities of Turbo Jugend all over the planet. This time, we go to Mexico. So, uh, we're shifting over to um, South America, Mexico that is. I'm, am I speaking to Pendemon666 now? Hey guys. So, uh, what's happening dude, where are you? Right now I'm at the beach. Um, we decided to, to take a, a couple of days off, the Toronto Queen, the First Lady, and myself. And uh, we're gonna, we've been here for a couple of days, we're going to be here a couple of more days before going back to to Guadalajara where where we live. So you're just doing a weekend trip, a longer weekend trip? Yep, that's right. Uh, but you, are you having your cooters with you or did you leave them at home? No, we, we did bring the, the best, but so far we haven't brought them out because it's too hot, but we're wearing sailor hats all, all the time. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good attitude, that's how we like it. So, um, so when's, when's the last time you saw Trooper Negro play? Because uh, I, fi I, I, I figure that they're not playing as, as often in uh, South America as you would like to. No, they, they haven't been south of the border or south of the continent at all. Uh, the last time we saw them was probably, what, what two weeks ago, uh, before the, the punk rock bowling. We went there for the, um, 
uh, San Diego show, mm -hmm. at the House Blues, and uh, also at the LA show and, and Los Angeles. That how was, far? Uh, how far is it if you if you go there? How, how did you get there? Oh, we we flew. We we went there by plane. Um, it went. It was me and my wife. Uh, yeah, I'm at the drama queen. Also, Victor, my brother, and, and his wife, and they have a. They started their own little jukan uh, a few months back, so it was the first time they they really brought the jackets out. It's Turbo Jukan MMA for mixed martial arts. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you so you have you have two jukans in your family. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, pretty much. That's impressive. I well, tip the, your hat to you. These these two guys. I mean, my brother and and his wife enjoy. That's what they do for a living, uh, martial arts and, and all that. They have a gym and, and that stuff. So uh, here, well, actually, I don't know if you saw those pictures on, on Facebook of my brother wedding, wearing the, the jacket in Abu Dhabi in Arabia. Oh, I think I have to check this out. But maybe if you, we can post it on the, um, in the, in the, on the Facebook page again. So, yeah, yeah so you try. That was one of the scariest things he ever done. What happened? What? Well, tell, asking people to, to shoot pictures of him in, in the middle of, uh, I think it was a mosque or something like that. He went nuts and... <laughs> okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. So I figured that it's kind of hard for you guys to, from, from South America to, to go and see the band play. Um, how many times have you done it? It's, it's, it's actually a, a very big challenge um, because, well, the first is logistics. And uh, the other one is money. It's usually the U.S. So depending on on which side of the U.S. they're they're playing, for instance, for us going to a New York show, it's it's totally impossible. It's too expensive to go all the way there. So usually it's either in California or in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I've seen um, them. You've the seen them. I... Yeah. Go ahead. You so you've seen them in Texas as well. Yes, uh, I've seen them um, three times in Texas. Uh, one for the Fun 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 Fest that was in November last year. We drove to that, and it was good 15, 16 hours of driving. Okay. Um, then before that, I did fly, and that was for a Fun Fun Fun, no, sorry, for a South by Southwest. And that was back in 2006, I think. That's I started the, the Satanica Atlanta love relationship with Gary Jackson, and... Uh, and also the rest of the guys, Chris Jackson and, and his wife, and, and also, of course, Mika, who's one of our most cool members for Satanica. And uh, then also to California, to Anaheim, a little bit before that, that's when, actually, that was my first tour with Jugend, like... Uh, Gathering or, or meeting? Yeah. yeah, because after that, I did go to... To Hamburg, but it wasn't for a Jugend Tag. I, the the two times I've been in Europe, um, the times have been wrong. So I either gone like too early for a Jugend Tag or too late for a Jugend Tag. <laughs> okay. Um, will you ever uh, make it to to be Jugend Tag? Are you planning on going there, or are some of you guys going there? We we would love to. Um, this year is going to be a little bit complicated because we have a the the wife and I have a turbo baby on the oven. Oh, and, nice to uh, hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a girl, and we're all excited. And uh, it was it was pretty good because the baby was enjoying Turbo, ne Turbo Negro a lot over the at Los Angeles and at uh, San Diego. So she she was like uh, pogo dancing and 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 and, and in, in, in the in the belly. So she felt it. Yeah, but... jumping in the belly. Well, that's a good sign, though. So congratulations on that, and. Um, how many? Um, tell me about the um, the situation of uh, the Turbo Jugends in in Mexico. How many Jugends are there? Are you meeting with other countries there? Do you have something like a a, a bigger gathering or like the Welt Turbo Jugend Tage in the, in a form for uh, South, South America? Okay, absolutely. Um, there's it's it's getting better. I think uh, a few years ago it was just weird, and and it's also funny because when people see your jacket, it's like. Are you bikers? And we're like, no, we're like a gay club. I mean, a biker gay club without motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's not funny in, in a country that's so macho and Catholic like Mexico, right? The second uh, question you get is, why isn't that name in Spanish? What the hell is? 
and then you laugh it off and say it's Norwegian, and it's like, what? Why? So a lot of explanation there. Mm -hmm. um, the the way it's it's right now the the, the way it's working here in, in Mexico is that we have well Satanica split into two chapters, so half of the the chapter is in is in Leon, which is my hometown, but I moved to to Guadalajara. Also, Trujillo and MMA is there, Victor and, and his wife. But pretty much, uh, Satanica in BJXXX, that's Leon, the airport code, it's, uh, it's run by, by Iggy, by Living Dead Iggy. Uh, probably you've seen his, his stuff around Facebook. Mm -hmm. then, uh, here in Guadalajara, it's, it's mainly run by, by me with, with the V. With, with Javier Cho and Alex from the Sudanese and uh, and all the rest. So it's two big, let's say two big chapters now. Um, here in Guadalajara we have about eight members now. Alone is, is a little bit close, close to 10 or 11 members. Now, in the past six months with the Ambassador Project, which I'm a part of as well, uh, we were able to resurrect two chapters in Mexico City, and that was pretty cool. Uh, one of them was it's a, a, a very old, or, yeah, not, not old, but, but uh, and, and they have been around, which is uh, from you and Aslan. And um, we were able to, to bring him up. Actually, uh, Akin has just ordered his, his jacket. Now, there's also Turbo Yugan Sinners in Mexico City, and they have four members now. And we also resurrected Turbo Yugan Mexico City. And uh, it's going to be four members with jackets as well. So it's, it's getting there. Uh, we've been receiving uh, some more communications and emails from people around the country with interest in, in either joining the existing chapters or uh, creating their, their own chapters, which, which is what we're pretty much telling people because I think that it's not cool to, for instance, have a jacket from Mexico City, if you live more than, let's say, 600 kilometers away, up north, and uh, or even further away, I don't know, maybe kilometers like in Monterrey or or in the north part of the sea. Um, yeah. So, so, so why not why not found found your own chapter then? Because you're as, as I would I would think that you probably will not know the people anyway. So it makes more sense to them to start their own to get their own thing going. I mean, t me. Being uh, like living in Cologne and being the president of uh, the Trooper Jugend Singer Club in Vienna, like which is a thousand kilometers away, but at least I founded it. So I'm I'm basically living in the exile. But for new for new Jugends, it makes total sense to me. I get get it totally. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any contact with Jugends from Argentina or Peru? Um, we do hang out with with Kathy. We haven't met yet. Um, also from from the chapters from Buenos Aires, uh, Roberto Vieira from he has a band called Alas Suicidas, and also Nat Natalia from well, I guess she calls herself TJ Natas. A little bit there. Also with the, the chapters are resurrecting from Brazil. Uh, we okay. do get a lot of contact. However, what? the distance is is not very helpful. Let's say that that for. For me to travel to Peru is kind of complicated because it's expensive. So, uh, if if I have to put it on a balance, I would rather go to see a turbo show in the U.S. Makes sense? Yeah, totally. How far is it? Um, well, the the thing is that a flight to to the U.S. probably is going to be around two or three hours versus six or seven hours to to South America, and then the expense factor, of course. Yeah, I get, I get that. So, do you think that the Tony um, joining the band and the and the new and the them playing in the U.S. a lot does it have a big influence on Turbo Jugend in South America? Yes, it has. I, I think uh, one of the, the things that always have been big is, is the, uh, for instance, the exposition of, of Turbo Jugend or I mean Turbo Negro in the Jackass movies and and in those. Those shows like Ridiculousness and and uh, Jackass and all those. Um, now that that we have Tony on board and there's more expensive touring, I think it's it's a, it's a little bit like what happened, maybe not as big as as 2002, with the Resurrection tour and all that, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's getting more attention. I, and I do feel that they even touring the U.S. more 
than, for instance, in 2007. And definitely, on. definitely. Through the retail, they pick up your shows. Yeah, so that reach this that this reaches out to you, and you can feel the impact of them focusing more on the on the U.S. now. And um, do you have any scheduled meetings or happenings uh, this year in South America, which you would like to tell people about? Actually, um, they we do. Um, for instance, well, this by the closing of the year, we kind of already partied a lot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, the, the annual, let's say, Satanica meeting is in May. And uh, that was the same week, actually, that Turbo Neighbor played in, in Las Vegas and Los Angeles when we were there. So the rest of the chapter are hard. Now, a week before that, we had uh, the infamous Darren Sanders from uh, Atlanta. And uh, also, we were able to give Bill uh, Campbell's jacket to him. Uh, he requested it to, to Tom like a year ago. Chuck had told me, let's, let's get this done. We never saw that. And her head was playing from Guadalajara. Was coming to to see what kind of do that. And uh, I still I'm still getting teased by the wife to this, to this day because I was so nervous and, and they acted like a, a dumbass and I couldn't speak and I was just in so awe because Motorhead is one of my favorite bands ever. So. So were you were you on stage or just uh, just meeting them at some other place? No, backstage. Like five minutes before they went on to play. Okay, and the, the, was he taking notice or was he like a, acting all rock star and acting all cool? No, no, no. He was he was just amazing. Actually, he was a gentleman. Uh, when when we shot the pictures, he said, "No, no, ladies go in the middle." And so he uh, pulled Yama by the arm very gently and put placed her in the middle of us. Uh, that was that was very very cool. He wore the jacket and, and even though it was a little bit big because we got uh, I guess the, the sizing wrong, mm -hmm. uh, just loved, loved it and. And uh, he laughed when he saw three in Wales and Lord Axmith, like the way he, his TV strap says and all that. So it was very, very cool. So very cool. Very cool to hear from South America. What we'll um, be doing within uh, the next, actually the, the future, we'll be talking, we'll try to talk to each other uh, at least um, um, twice every half year. So we'll try to do this on a monthly basis to get um, information and um, news and updates from each and every continent. Um, um, Pandemon666, I wish you a, like, a good vacation, have a nice weekend, and um, I really, really um, hope to talk to you soon. And if anything comes up, if you have any events or want to promote anything, just hit me up and we'll do a radio talk again. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll, we'll take care of that and, and same here. I mean, whenever you guys want to come, uh, anyone that wants to travel to Mexico, just hit us up and uh, we're awesome tour guides and we like to party so okay that's noted and it's, that this is going to be brought into into the tour Bugan world so you heard that if you want to go to mexico just um hit um pandemon 666 up and you're all set all right so take care and i'll talk to you soon okay big hugs and uh have a good one guys yeah see you Perfect forever yeah that's bye, fun. bye. So that was Pandemon666 who was talking to us from the beautiful beaches of Mexico. Um, eventually he made his way to Hamburg to the Welt uh, Tübingen Tage and we got the chance to, to meet him for the first time and uh, I personally had a real blast with him so thank you for coming and hope to see you um, Pandemon666 very very soon. Um, to end this podcast, let me take the chance to thank uh, Muti and Fidel who were organizing the Welt Tübingen Treffen this year. It was an awesome, really, really awesome um, extravaganza. We had um, over 800 member Tübingen members attending uh, the event. We had a boat trip on the uh, Saturday, which was organized by Tübingen Tannheim. We had 99 sailors sailing on this uh, cruise at the harbor. Of Hamburg so that was really nice unfortunately we had also a few uh, things I would like to mention that didn't really went well first of all if you guys are, are organizing some so, some sort of event or concert and if you guys are hiring security please make sure those guys know what know what to do because at the Welt Tübingen Tage I saw 
two of them, two of them securities manhandling one member of uh, Turbo Jugend because he was stage diving. They pulled him out of the crowd. Um, I mean, you can do that. You can talk to them, but um, or to to the to to people stage diving. But what they did, they just uh, pulled him out of the building. They were like manhandling him and beating him to, um, into a not on, not into a pulp, but they were really severely beating him and threw him out of the building. So. Um, if you guys are organizing a, a concert within the Turbo you can please make sure securities know what they're doing and um, um, they should allow, allow, peop allow people to stage dive. Obviously uh, the people from Grunsch Grunschbahn or not, maybe not the people but the securities were not aware of how a punk rock concert should take place. So that was not so nice. And not, a not, not so nice thing to, um, happened at Fred Schlemmerick. I heard that um, two kuten were stolen from right inside Fred's. Um, some people left their kuten in some corner, um, and went away, and so they um, somebody stole their kuten. And I can only uh, suggest and really, really ask you guys to never ever uh, leave your kuten, your beloved kuten, where you invest so much time and love in. Never leave them alone. Uh, always let them on your body. Maybe um, if you're feeling hot or filthy then uh, maybe um, take your t-shirt or bra off below the jackets but never ever leave your jackets alone so um, well in case anybody likes them and they since they are good looking the people will like them just uh, prevent them from being stolen and having all this trouble that goes along with it okay so let's conclude uh, um, on a very positive note I've um, fortunately found a nice piece of music which was given to me quite a few years ago by uh, Turbo Jugend Helsinki's finest Yves de Ville. She uh, did a song about Hamburg, it's called Hamburg City Boy. Uh, it's a song about uh, Turbo Jugend in, uh, in, in Hamburg. It's a wave song. She wrote it for the Turbo Jugend and you can really enjoy this one. It's not available on any disc or on any uh, record. It's just a song she did uh, for herself and she um, granted us to use it. As the outro of this month's um, True Vegan podcast, so open up your ears and enjoy Eve Deville from True Vegan Helsinki.